Steve's a real mover in this business. Um, I don't know if any of you know him in the room. If you don't, I would encourage you to get to him. This is my first meeting with this group. Normally, it's uh, Tom Pruitt, who most of you may know, attended this workshop. Tom called last week and said he had a conflict, but I mind setting in for him. I said, no, Tom, I can go and take notes. What I didn't know is he volunteered me to speak. <laughs> so we get back to the office on Friday, Tom and I have a conversation. <laughs> uh, so I heard a lot about what's being said today, and my, what I, my marks are prepared, maybe down in the weeds a little bit, but I think somewhere there is a philosophical building block that we can, we can use to build upon to make our grid more resilient. I want to share that with you. Remember, the only shot the radiator is not the actual transformer tank, so it wasn't a whole lot of damage, but it was uh, making an awful But we, our substation was very, very vulnerable. Open air, mountainous, rural. Um, just started, started us thinking about, man, they, they are so vulnerable to, to attack. So we want to step further than, than the SIP 14 requirement required. We said, we're going to have a lot of defense. But being an ex nuclear guy, death and defense is kind of our thing, you know. So I said, we need a recovery plan. If we lose that substation completely, what do we do? How do we recover from such a catastrophic event uh, in, uh, in our system? Okay. So, uh, remember, Metcalf was shot a transformer. So, some folks, some of the uh, utilities, took a uh, uh, plan to have spare equipment housed locally or nearby or in the secure warehouses. We said, where our substations are on bottom, we have 2,500 substations just in North and South Carolina. So our, our, our assumption was, it's a whole advanced news. They have brought in drones, they've shot rockets, they've driven airplanes into substations. It's gone. There's nothing there. There's no bus work. There's no transformers. There's no switches. There's no control house. Everything is totally locked out. That's our basic assumption. The whole st station is, is a deep in off. All the major equipment, like I said, transport, everything's gone. 
And that's also assumed that you can't repair it and you have to be replaced or rebuilt uh, in, in place. That's, that's our initial assumption. So we, as we looked at that, uh, we said we're losing a substation. Typically, you don't do that when you're in my one planning. But this is this is the boss we took. I think I'm gonna let's see, jump ahead here. Wait on this slide. Okay. I guess uh in, in the uh something tra had been transfer over. Uh, I had a picture of a typical substation uh that um had, had this substation has uh, twelve two thirty KV transmission lines terminating in. And our typical planning criteria would be losing one of those transmission lines and what it would do to our system flows. Sometimes we'll take out two transmission lines if they have to be on the same right of way or share a tower. So that might be M minus two, but we call it M minus one. That's how we study our, uh, our system. This, this requirement requires to lose the entire substation. So the case I had that's been showing up here, we lost all 12 transmission lines. In that substation. So, the, so we started thinking through that. Okay, what what is the most critical elements of that substation? One to, to uh, maintain stability of our system and return control of the system, and then reconfigure so we can return electrical service to our customers and as short as amount of time possible. That was our objective. So we, we start out in phases. Phase one is the initial operator response. Those are immediate actions that the operator must take because what an operator will see are overloads and voltage issues. He does not know that there's been an attack on a major substation. He sees lines being overloaded, voltage issues. So he had he knows what to do. He or she knows what to do to respond to that. But this is atypical. This is this is not losing one line. This is losing all twelve. So we had that's their job, their objective to get the system to a stable condition. How they do that? They shed load, redispatch generation. That's the only tool we have to stay by the system. Shed load and change generation. The next phase in this recovery would be, we call it a short-term recovery. What are the next steps to return to service? Our main objective there is to get the lights back on for our customers. We would assess the damage, reconfigure the system network, and redispatch generation. That's, that's the tools we have available to us. Step three is complete recovery. We return the system to the desired level of reliability. Uh, we can rebuild that substation or other long-term solution. We have a timeline for that. Phase one, you only got 30 minutes in phase one. So then we've lost entire critical substation, uncontrolled cascading is taking place. Operator's got 30 minutes to stabilize the event. So we have a prescribed set of operator actions they have control zero, you got 30 minutes to stabilize the system, you may have three to four weeks to some level of recovery to get all the lights back on, and then uh, complete recovery to year plus. Oh, here it is. You got order. Here, here, here's my uh, substation, one line. You can see there, that, that's a high reliable substation. That's the breaker and a half scheme we call it. We got uh, two buses, breaker and a half, for all the major transmission lines, large generation on this one. Uh, that's the kind of situation we're dealing with. Methodology, how do we go about doing this? We used a program we all use in the industry called PSSE. It's the power flow software. We model the system, we run power flows, we check voltages, we check current flows. Um, but in this case, we had to do a complete removal of all the lines in that substation. We utilized 2016 assembly peak uh, loading levels. We created a case for each phase to show prior and post conditions. So in phase one, we said, what would it look like immediately when it again occurs, we lost all those lines. What does an operator see? We looked at that. Then we said, once we stabilize the system, once, once we give the operator some action to take, shedding load, redispatching, what does that look like? Then how can we rec recover temporarily? And how we recover completely? We uh, simulate the operator actions to move overload, stabilize the system, we determine the amount of the amount of location, load shed, load shed, is, it, it has to happen here, no other choice. Then we looked at the critical power flows. So we did, this took a lot of studies. We said, okay, you got 12 lines in a substation, and we, we, would, we, would, we would pair up uh, lines uh, together, in and out, 
uh, and say which ones are most critical to the system to recover power flows. To a lot of simulations, we don't, we don't do this, this is our normal planning stuff, so we run a lot of studies to determine what were the critical power flows in that substation. And then we said, okay, let's make temporary connections. Let's go outside the substation fence, erect structures, jump with the lines together, reestablish power flows, and we're back in business. So um, we, we did we had a lot of studies of uh, what lines you would pair together, how you jump them around. We ran the, uh, called a Terra contingency study for each one of those cases. We ran an N minus one on that case. So if we reconfigured the system in this temporary condition, they had another contingency, the N minus one, what would happen to our system? And in some cases, some cases said, yes, you're going to go back into cascading. If we lost a temporary connection we just made, we're going to go back in cascading. So we had to look at what contingencies that could put us back into cascading and identify those. And it wasn't too many, it's about you know, three or four in each case. All right, so we used the results to value the status system for that timeline, the potential cascading, and um, we had put all these cases into a table and, and we would view those as we were our, um, our actions we take. So here's here's kind of the objective of each phase recovery. Phase one is shed load, reach the space generation, save a lot of system. You got 30 minutes to do that, maybe in one hour, 30 minutes is our target. And in phase two, we would reestablish critical power flows by installing temporary line jumpers. We would jump for critical lines together outside of substation fence. The inside fence is on the ground. We, can, we were determined to do that in one to three days. Um, one case, we're looking at maybe four hours. So we, we, if we lose the entire critical substation, we're saying with our plans that we can be back in this three or three days. Now, if you lose more than one, different story, but for, for one. Uh, rebuilding relocating substation. <laughs> uh, I talked to guys down in Florida, had a couple of these sites, and said that might be a good thing to happen in substation. We lose this one, we would not rebuild it back here again. It's too, too constricted. It's not, just, not in this spot. Um, so that's, that, that will give us time to look at our system, rebuild it in a, in a, in a more logical fashion, where to try to piece it back together quickly. Right? Right. Uh, these temporary line connections, uh, what we did, though, we designed, we had a design for these. We would uh, look at conductor capacities. The, the protection for the lines had to be evaluated. In other words, what we're doing here is making long lines out of short lines. We got to make sure they're compatible, that the relaying works. Uh, we had a, quite a few relaying projects we had to do. We spent millions of dollars uh, re uh, changing out relays to make this possible. We're still in the process of doing it on some lines. But we can we can take we can lose those lines, tie them together, and then the relay is already compatible. But just uh, all we got to do is change the settings. Structure stability. This is important. We had to look at each structure outside of the substation to make sure it withstand the loss of that time back in the substation. That was a, a dead end structure basically. And we had one case in Florida that's not. We had to rebuild that structure. Um, we did that already. Um, we had to make sure we had enough land outside the substation fence to erect these temporary structures. And we did we did this usually using standard components. So the things we have on hand and our warehouse already, no specialized equipment, no specialized structures. So we just do this with, with typical materials. It's always an inventory. We make job packages, complete build materials, build detailed drawings, work orders. We, we can start this effort within hours of the event happening. And we're already uh, moving, we're at plans, or have the materials to, to uh, restore power. We're doing a periodic review of those. It's important that you review these plans periodically because you have your system changes to make sure they still apply. So we're doing that. It was uh, mentioned earlier too in one presentation about operator action. This is very critical. Um, we spend a lot of time determining what detailed operating procedures had to be written to follow prescribed sequential actions. That's really important. Prescribed sequential actions. An operator just can't start turning knobs and stop this cascade. They have to do precise um, actions in a, in, a, in, a, in a sequence of events. So they can't just go start doing things. Because uh, you, you got to control the cascading. Uh, we have uh, annual training for operators on this. Uh, we have not. Uh, 
done some aero training yet. Uh, we are working with Clemson and Charleston for another project to build a control center for operators to go in and actually train on this scenario. Um, that, that's, a, that's another effort there to help give them experience in, in doing this that they didn't have occurs. This, this last bullet is a very interesting one. Uh, we're really working with enterprise security to inform the system operator the station is under attack. You remember, an operator is looking at gauges and lights and things, and things start happening. They have no idea that this substation 400 miles away is under a physical attack. So we work with uh, enterprise security who has eyes and ears on these stations to see if, if, that if they did determine that yes, we're under a coordinated physical attack on a substation, that we send out a message and we go, we go, we go into action under a complete scenario. They only, they only, let me only lose one transformer. We're going to go into the total action and lost the entire substation. I would say we had we had a number of capital projects uh, we had to do, um, and then as we're as we're doing more capital projects in these substations, we have to make sure we don't do it, make a change that messes up our recovery plan. So we developed a design checklist. So if some other engineer is, is doing something in, in one of these stations, they don't know it's a SIP 14 station. They're not supposed to know that, just know it's a critical one. If they're doing some work in that substation, there's a checklist. And if you, if you check a certain block, they have to contact me. I gotta review that change and make sure it doesn't impact our recovery plans. If it does, we put a hole in the project. It was reviewed or worked out or changed recovery plan. So we want we want to keep things prepared so recovery plans uh, can work called upon to do so. Okay, uh, so uh, in, uh, if, if the event happens, uh, phase one operators know what to do. They get trained. Uh, phase two, we have their design already in that final storage. The required materials are assembled. Uh, they're pulled from the inventory. If there is a special item. We will pull up the secure warehouse, but right now we don't have any specialty uh, material items. Uh, and the system that will be operated in a new configuration, it, this is kind of a key point right here, is that we're going to change our system configuration. It may not be ideal, but our customers have power. It's not the, not the most secure, not the most reliable, but the power is restored. We must operate that way for maybe up to 18 months. And then in phase three, we developed the best plan for complete recovery. Rebuild, relocate. We may want to eliminate the, the need for that substation of that consequence. And that's, that will be our goal, is to design out a critical substation out of our system. Just a summary. Um, we assume the worst case scenario of total destruction. We developed sister operator action to stabilize the system. Temporary connections to bypass the station, we establish critical power flows, repair and training system operators, we clear out the VIDAs, uh, recovery plans, uh, make sure it's adequate. Uh, there are two things I'd like to uh, add to this. Um, I mentioned that in this temporary arrangement, our system is vulnerable and it's, it's not as reliable as what we've been, right? Uh, we, we would, it'd be great to have a tool that you could. A probabilistic risk assessment tool, PRA tool, like the group folks have, that says your system is in this level of risk and this configuration. You change that configuration, now your risk is this. You'll be able to compare quantitatively what our risk is in that new configuration. And I've been working with the Department of Energy and Idaho National Labs on that concept. So that's something we're working on to be a good tool to help evaluate the vulnerability we are in the state for a long period of time. I hadn't forgot what the other was. But anyway, uh, there, there, are, there are some, we, we have a lot of tools now that, that we can uh, take this philosophy on. Is, and I call this a philosophical building block. We take, we lose one substation, here's how what happens. And we lose a, a region of substation. We can take this to a larger level if we need to to evaluate our system impacts and what can we do to restore, restore service. So I think that's my last slide. Yes. Time for just one question. So, Mr. Gruhaz, it's here. Okay, sure. Steve, you mentioned in phase one, your first step is shed loads. 
how do you arrive at a sequence of priorities and how do your customers know where they are on that list? <laughs> <laughs> normal, normal operations uh, operators have the ability to shed load to protect the system. Uh, and, and this is where it kind of gets tricky because they will shed load back to where you shed it to prevent overloads and further cascade the system. We can't differentiate who, who's without power and who's not <coughs> at, at the transmission level. So that's that's been a dispute. We're trying to preserve the bulk electric system with this. <coughs> 